Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you all logging on. I think there's 10 of you that are on there now. Um, hope everyone's doing good. I'm doing good. I'm loving the sunshine, and the days just keep getting warmer and warmer. So summer is around the corner. Yay! So I'm really happy everyone um, is handing in their assignments and their questions, and everyone's completing their quizzes. Um, that's great. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, today we're going to be covering three different topics. So the first topic we're going to talk about is physics. Okay, so physics is kind of going to be a repeat from last week. Um, I know we went into uh, electricity and electrical equipment um, quite um, intensely. So that's going to roll over into the physics lesson today. Okay, and Anna has put those physics study notes in your folders. So if you want to grab those, you can follow uh, along with me as I read. Um, then we're going to go into product selection and ingredients. So that's an actual chapter in your manual, so we can read through together. And then we're going to do some retailing. Um, and we're going to do some retail uh, role playing as well. So I've got some products here um, that we're going to go through. And I'm actually going to ask you guys um, to explain uh, certain aspects of features and benefits, but we'll get into that a little later, okay? So first, let's start with our physics notes. So if you want to get your physics notes out, that would be great. Okay. Oh, and um, I brought Morticia. Um, with me so I wouldn't be lonely um, all day. Most of you know who Morticia is. She's shy, she's turning away. Okay, physics. So, phoresis is also known by two other names. You need to know that iontophoresis and electrophoresis um, are forms of phoresis. This is the use of positive and negative ions with an aqueous solution to produce a chemical change on the face. So we talked about this last week, um, the effects that uh, positive and negative ions have on the face. Um, you remember that an aqueous solution is a water-based solution. And all forms of phoresis do produce chemical changes. So there's lots of contraindications as well that we need to be aware of. So you need to know, disencrustation equals deep cleansing of the skin. Uh, it softens and liquefies sebum, and this is known as saponification. So saponification means softening and liquefying hard sebum. In cataphresis, when using, um, when using cataphresis, the blood vessels and ostea contract. This is soothing to the nerves. In anaphoresis, blood vessels and ostea dilate, stimulating the nerves. So remember with cataphoresis, we're driving products deep into the skin. So once the products are in the skin and they've been absorbed, the, the pores tighten, um, everything is soothed and nerves, nerves and uh, capillaries are soothed uh, as well. The opposite in anaphoresis um, is deep cleansing. So things are stimulated, things are coming out of the pores, um, nerves are stimulated, blood vessels dilate um, because everything's coming out. Performing infiltration using the phoresis machine facilitates the ionized solution to penetrate the skin one sixteenth of an inch. So not very much. It's a lot when you consider how small and high, how minute the layers of the skin are, but it's really only one sixteenth of an inch. Cataphresis can be performed after anaphresis. So if you want to do anaphresis and cataphresis. Anaphresis happens first because you want to do your deep cleansing first and then you want to drive all the products back in and tighten and close the pores so then you can do cataphresis. So you can do one after the other in that order. You need to know that zinc oxide blocks out all UV rays. Um, in any professional uh, skincare line you're normally going to have one or two options for sunscreen, and those sunscreens should always have at least six to eight percent um, zinc oxide. 
okay? If the sunscreen you're buying doesn't have zinc oxide in it, then don't buy it, it's just full of chemicals. Sunshine is composed of 12% visible rays, 8% UV rays, the remaining 80% are heat rays called infrared rays, and they're invisible. And you know that all the colors of the rainbow are Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Yeah, the chapter, the chapter's in your folder. Yeah, thank you. Photosensitizers. Photosensitizers are products or substances that make the skin more vulnerable to damage from UV rays. So things that you put topically on the skin that enhance um, the UV rays, basically the damage that the UV rays um, can cause. So things that you can put on the skin um, that intensify the damaging rays of the sun are essential oils. So you never want to put essential oils on your skin and then go um, into the direct sunlight. You don't want to use any fish oils, essential oils, um, especially citrus uh, perfumes, like um, perfumes that have bergamot, lemon, lime in them. Um, people that are on antibiotics are hypersensitive to that as well. Carotene. Now carotene is derived from carrots. And carotene is what gives certain products that orangey-brown tint. So a lot of self-tanners uh, self um, that you use to make yourself look like you're tanned have carotene in them. The number one reason we usually put self-tanners on is so we look tan before we go out in the sun or before we go on a holiday. So it's funny that that's a photosensitizer because you're not supposed to wear that out in the sun. Not that self-tanners are as popular as they once were, but mental note that for your clients. Um, oral contraceptives, uh, most people are on oral contraceptives, that is a photosensitizer that makes your skin sensitive to the sun, uh, like tetracycline, uh, and drugs like insulin or steroids. So what happens when you have photosensitizers on the skin? It just means that the UVB, the burning ray, is accentuated, so it's more intense, we know that UVB ray affects the melanin layer, the fifth layer in the skin, the germinativium layer, um, and that's what stimulates melanin. So what's going to happen in those certain areas is that it's going to overproduce melanin and you're going to have dark patches. So it's really common for people to have those darker patches on the upper forehead, on the upper cheeks, um, a mustache, you can have a pigment mustache. Um, so really common to have these patches from that, and that's from a photosensitizer. So if you can minimize your photosensitizers or the use of photosensitizers, then you can pre prevent um, hyperpigmentation hyper damage. PABA. This is really important to know about. Paraaminobenzoic acid. Paraaminobenzoic acid is a preservative found in skin and body care products. It's been a preservative found in skin and body products for many years, uh, and in food products too, wheat, fruit, um, a small, um, small percentages um, ingested or used topically usually are fine, but it's when you are exposed to large amounts of PABA um, that it could cause a problem. And I'll get into that a little more. I have a worksheet um, about more information uh, and the damaging effects of PABA. But you need to know that PABA is para-aminobenzoic acid. Um, you need to know that erythema solare means sunburn, and sunstroke causes dizziness, vomiting, and headaches. The infrared lamp that you can use during body treatments or facial treatments stimulates blood circulation, great for mature, dry, devitalized skins. So the infrared lamp is that red heat. It's a heat lamp, basically. So instant stimulating, great for dry, mature, gets the blood vessels um, dilated, gets the blood flowing. Um, the blue lamp is the opposite. When you put the blue lamp above the client's face, it instantly diffuses redness. So if your client's having a reaction or they flush easily, or they go red easily, um, put the blue lamp on them and it'll diffuse the redness. You can get the handheld devices as well. 
that have the light therapy, so you can use it um, on specific areas um, with that device. So blue lamp diffuses redness, calms the skin, great for reactive, red, hot, inflamed, um, acne, and blotchy skin. Okay? So these are the physics notes that you guys have. It's just a page. Um, this is basically all you need to know for your test, okay? So you have your physics questions that you need to complete and hand in. I have all of the physics um, question answers here. I wanna make sure everybody completes, them, uh, completes the questions on their own first before I go over it. Um, we're gonna refine our Zoom a little better for tomorrow, so we're gonna individualize the spa classes and the nail classes, so we'll do those separate, um, so we can focus more on the materials that we wanna cover. So tomorrow, when we do our Zoom, same time, 12 o'clock, um, we can go over all of our question answers, um, or like we did uh, last week, specific questions you guys have, um, we can go over as a group, okay? Ah, oops, I'm hitting the mic, <laughs> getting in trouble. Okay, um, Amir, can you pull up that diagram again? Same diagram we looked at last week. Remember, triple A, triple C. So in order to remember the equation for cataphoresis, you want to remember CCC, so cataphoresis, cations are being produced on the client's face, and the client is holding the cathode. Okay, we know that cations are positive, and we know that the cathode is the negative pole. Triple A, anaphoresis, anions are being produced on the face, the client is holding the anode, and we know that anions are negative, and the anode is the positive pole. What type of uh, solution do we use with cataphoresis? If cations are positive and that's what's being produced on the client's face, then we know that we have to use a positively charged solution. So any aqueous water-based solution will be positively charged. And opposite of that, when we're doing anaphoresis, we want to use a negatively charged solution. So that would be like a baking soda and water or a saline solution. You also have to remember that during cataphoresis, we're driving products in, closing the pores, so blood vessels and ostea contract and uh, nerves are soothed. And the opposite in anaphoresis, this is stimulating, so nerves are stimulated, uh, blood vessels dilate. Um, and it's just overall stimulating and detoxifying. Okay? So that's it, really. All you really need to know is that one page of notes for your physics test. Easy peasy. Let's just go over contraindications as well. Um, just a review. Obviously, when you're using any kind of electricity on the face or body, um, you have to be careful of your clients that have metal implants people that suffer from anxiety or hypertension, people that have cancer, people that are pregnant, people that have broken skin, reactive skin, um, high blood pressure, and epilepsy. Um, high blood pressure meaning that they actually have to be on medication. If they're not on medication for it, then it's fine. But if someone's actually on medication, then absolutely not. Okay. Okay, so let's go into our product and selection chapter um, right now. Product selection and ingredients. It's in your manual. I'll give you a minute to pull that up. Yeah, for the physics, you just need the physics notes for the test. Yeah, that's it.
Okay, guys, let's start. Product selection and ingredients. An important part of the esthetician's job is to recommend sunscreen to protect the skin from UV rays. Estheticians need to stress to their clients that sun exposure not only leads to skin cancer, but to aging, hyperpigmentation, capillary damage, free radical damage, and collagen and elastin deterioration. UVA rays are longer and absorbed by the dermis, causing uh, burning, aging. UVB rays are shorter and can penetrate into the epidermis, causing sunburns. And sunscreens either absorb or reflect UV rays. Okay, so you need to know that SPF refers to sun protection factor in sun, uh, in sunscreens, okay? Sun protection factor. So an SPF 2 blocks 50% of UVB, allowing a person to stay in the sun twice as long without burning. So if you normally can stay in the sun for two hours without burning, then if you use an SPF 2, this is going to allow you to stay in the sun for four hours without burning. Um, an SPF 8 blocks almost 90%, and an SPF 15 blocks 93% of UVB and some UVA. So yes, if you sweat a lot, or you go in the pool, or you're going into the ocean, and you're washing off the sunscreen, you need to reapply. But it will allow you to be in the sun that much longer than what you normally would be without sunscreen. Um, they say that an SPF uh, 15 is really all you need. Normally, a professional um, product, a professional skincare product with an SPF 15 has a very high percentage of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Okay, so again, make sure your, your sunscreens have those ingredients in them. If they don't, if they're purely chemical, um, then I don't want to say don't use them because I know doctors um, and dermatologists will say using a, a chemical sunscreen is better than not using anything because obviously the sun's rays are damaging. But um, in the past, there have been studies, especially in Australia, with different sunscreens. Um, and some chemical sunscreens actually can cause cancer from the reaction uh, with the sun on the skin. So I'm not saying that that is a fact, but I'm saying there has been studies out there. I want you guys to do your own research um, and find out for yourself what people are saying, um, what studies are out there on chemical sunscreens versus um, more natural titanium dioxide, zinc oxide based uh, sunscreens, okay? I find um, if I'm rushing and I haven't had time to order from my supplier to get my uh, sunscreen in the summer, um, I'll go to the baby aisle in the drugstore and I'll buy a sunscreen for a baby. And normally the baby sunscreens have titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in them. Um, they will go a little more white on the skin if you use too much, but at least you know you're getting more of a natural uh, protection factor. Okay? So we know that non-chemical ingredients are titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, and we call these physical blocks. They do not irritate the skin. Uh, Self-tanning lotions are formulated with dihydroxyacetone. Dihyd dihydroxyacetone um, is an, an ingredient that reacts with the proteins on the skin, turning them darker. Um, so we talked about self-tanners. Usually there's carotene in these self-tanners, which is a photosensitizer, um, which makes this, gives the tint uh, a brown, orangey kind of tint to the skin, making it look like there's a tan. Okay, choosing a product line. While professional products may cost more initially, they are more effective because of a higher concentrate of active ingredients. So that's what you tell your client. You're gonna end up spending more money buying retail products because you're gonna need to use more to see results. And retail products aren't that much more, uh, or not that, that uh, much cheaper than professional products. Um, I'm finding now with retail products, they're quite expensive. Um, so if you're gonna invest the money, you're gonna spend all that money um, buying drugstore brands or even Sephora brands, um, you're paying a lot of money for that. Um, you might as well invest in a professional product. Professional products are concentrated, so you need to use a lot less. Um, so you actually end up saving money uh, in the end. So Less product is needed because of the high concentrate um, of ingredients. 
the product your client chooses to, be at home, uh, to use at home may be more important than those you use during a facial treatment. So you always want to recommend uh, home care for your client to maximize the benefits of the professional service. Okay, yes, they're going to see results right away after their professional facial, but you wanna tell them that they wanna use these products at home just to maximize the benefits. Um, retail sales are not just about making money. You are educating your client on the best way to take care of their skin. You are in the best position to recommend products. Usually the markup price for retail products is 50%. So yes, you wanna maximize the benefits of the facial that your client just had, and you want them to um, benefit from the professional service, but at the same time, you wanna sell retail because you wanna make money. You wanna make extra money. So normally in most spas that I've worked at, um, they always give you 10%. So starting with 10%. So if I sell a cream for $50, I'm gonna get an extra $5 um, on my paycheck for that hour. Okay, so if you're selling a cream every hour, that's an extra $5 every hour. If you're making $20 an hour, now you're making $25 an hour, and that is significant on your paycheck. So one thing you should get into the habit of doing with all your clients is recommending product, okay? And we're gonna get into how to do that confidently um, in the next chapter. Um, Yes, you wanna make money, but you also wanna make money for your employer. The more money you make them, the happier they are with you, and that gives you an upper hand. Um, lots of people have incentives, they have um, games that they play with uh, employees, they have employee of the month in terms of client retention, uh, retail sales, service sales, so they give prizes. Sometimes it might be a trip to Whistler, it might be a gift basket full of product, um, it might be cash. Um, employees will reward um, their employee or employers will reward their employees that um, exceed um, what's expected of them which is nice ingredients can be derived from plants animals or vitamins they are also synthesized from chemicals in the lab hypoallergenic describes ingredients that won't cause allergies and non comogenic will not clog pores or cause comedones. So components of product formulation. So we're gonna go through ingredients that you need to recognize in professional skincare, okay? So antioxidants. Neutralize free radicals before they attach themselves to the cell membrane. So we know free radicals are unstable oxygen molecules that destroy cells. And we wanna stop that damaging cycle with antioxidants. How can you get more antioxidants in the body? You eat them. Dark leafy greens, um, bright vegetables and fruits. Um, you can limit the damage in the body from a healthy diet, and then you can limit the damage done topically on the skin with your skincare routine. Binders, substances that bind or hold products together like glycerin, algae, derived from minerals and phytohormones. Algae remineralize and revitalize the skin. Uh, algae is more, uh, more so used on the body. We know that algae is great for um, cellulite. Allantoin is used in cold creams, hand lotion, aftershave, um, and it has an ability to heal wounds. Aloe, derived from the sap of the uh, aloe leaf, this ingredient is used in the form of a gel or diluted into a juice. Um, it's very hydrating, softening and healing, antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory. Um, you can actually use aloe, as we know, topically um, on the skin for irritations. Um, you can also drink it. It's really good for people that suffer from um, irritated stomach lining, ulcers, stress, um, you can drink aloe vera um, every day to soothe that. Alum, made from alum uh, aluminum, potassium, or ammonium sulfite, has a strong astringent action and is usually used as a styptic to stop bleeding in small cuts. Azulene, derived from the chamomile plant, has a deep blue color, is great on sensitive skin because of its anti-inflammatory soothing properties. 
Benzyl peroxide, a drying ingredient with antibacterial properties, commonly used for blemishes and acne. It can be an allergen or irritant. Um, benzyl peroxide is usually uh, used for topical um, products for acne. Calendula, anti-inflammatory plant extract. Carrot, light yellow essential oil, rich in vitamin A. Ceramides are lipids, materials that are a natural part of the intercellular cement. Chamomile, plant extract with calming and soothing properties. Collagen, long chain molecular protein that lies on the top of the skin and binds water, also preventing water loss. Often derived from the placenta of cows. So yes, um, collagen is commonly used in face masks and it is normally derived from the placenta um, of cows. Um, it's used topically, um, and when you're using collagen from another source, um, animal source, it does stimulate, stimulate your own collagen. But there are a lot of products that you can get that aren't derived from animal sources. Um, I know that doesn't sound very nice for a lot of people um, to be putting that on their face, um, but there are lots of other products out there um, that are made synthetically um, that do, uh, can have, produce the same result on the skin. Echinacea from the purple coneflower prevents infection and has healing properties. It can be used internally to support the immune system. So you can use it topically and internally. Essential oils derived from herbs having many different effects on the skin and psyche. Exfoliants, usually in the form of a scrub. Water-based products containing a humectant mixed with some sort of abrasive agent, such as almond meal or polyethanol granules. I know I went over this uh, with a lot of you before. Um, polyethanol granules, synthetic polyethanol granules are banned now um, in North America. You cannot um, use those little tiny microbeads anymore in skincare <clears throat> because what's happening is they're so minute um, and they're perfectly spherical, they're perfectly round. So they're getting into our water system, they're bypassing our filtration systems in our water systems, um, they're going back into our oceans, um, our fish, uh, our marine life is eating them, and then we are eating the fish, and they're finding that, they're fi finding these polyethanol beads in animals, in fish, in the ocean, and in humans now, because they're so tiny. So um, you'd wanna stay away from using products that have that. Um, I know we also wanna stay away from using nuts, ground up nuts or abrasive uh, nut products on the skin because they cause micro lesions on the skin causing inflammation. So make sure um, that the product that you're using, um, if they do have uh, a rougher uh, scrub exfoliant, um, make sure that it's really soft and, and it doesn't have um, any nuts. Nuts are great to use on the body, but not on the face. Glycerin formed by decomposition on, of oils or fats, a very strong water binder. You'll find that there's glycerin in a lot of body creams. Grapeseed, a powerful antioxidant with soothing properties. Green tea, powerful antioxidant and soothing agent. Um, green tea is antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, stimulating, and great for cupro skin. Um, you can make green tea packs for the face, um, and you can drink green tea. We know green tea is great for the body, full of antioxidants. Herbs, there's hundred, hundreds of different herbs that are used in skincare. They can be used to heal, stimulate, soothe, and moisturize. Horse chestnut contains bioflavonoids, also known as vitamin P strengthens capillary walls, and is great for telangiectasia. You'll notice that vitamin P is a lot more common in skincare now uh, for that reason, the strengthening of the capillary walls. Hyaluronic acid, a hyla, uh, hydrophilic agent with excellent water binding properties. Jojoba, extracted from the seeds of a desert shrub and is used as a lubricant. Kojic acid, a brightening agent. Kojic acid is used in a lot of brightening and lightening creams. Lanolin, a high water absorption. Uh, it's a derivative of sheep's wool. 
So you'll find that there's lanolin in a lot of body creams, body creams that are richer for cracked heels or cracked skin. You'll see lanolin. It does come off of a sheep's wool. So it's extracted from the hair. They shear the sheep and then they extract the oil from the hair, um, obviously without hurting the sheep because the hair grows back, but it does come from an animal. Um, lavender, an all-purpose oil that is antibacterial, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory. Licorice, anti-irritant used on sensitive skin. Um, licorice is used in lightening products as well. It's a melanin inhibitor. Liposomes are hollow spheres made of lipids that are used to transport other agents. Methylparaben uh, is a preservative. Mineral oil is a de-emulsifier of uh, dirt trapped in pores. So if you have a really thick, cakey makeup, um, you can actually pre-cleanse with mineral oil, remove it, and then cleanse with your regular fo uh, foam or milk cleanser. Mucopolysaccharides, carbohydrate lipid complexes, good water binders. Papaya is a natural enzyme. Papaya is great to add into sea salt scrubs or body scrubs used topically on the body. Um, and papaya is actually really good to eat after meals, like after a heavy dinner. They say eat some papaya or um, pineapple, and those natural enzymes will help break down and digest food. Parabens are preservatives. Peppermint is really good for reducing um, irritation, itching, redness. Um, it cools and constricts capillaries. Petroleum jelly, occlusive agent that restores the barrier um, layer by holding in water. Potassium hydroxide is a strong alkaline used in soaps. Propylene glycol is a humectant. Quaternium 15 is a preservative. Retinoic acid is a vitamin A derivative. Um, used to treat acne and aging, wrinkles. May cause photosensitivity, redness and peeling, so it is quite strong. You have to be careful. Rose is moisturizing um, and it's used for deodorant properties. Salicylic acid is an exfoliant, an enzymatic exfoliant. Um, sorry, it's an acid. Uh, exfoliant and it comes from sweet birch or willow bark. Salicylic acid, we talked about this before, it's a BHA, it's a beta hydroxy acid, acid. so it's the more gentle acid, it's the most gentle acid you can use, so really good for your more sensitive skins, your red skins, or your um, inflamed acneic clients. Okay, a few more here. Seaweed. Derivatives such as algae are known for their humectant properties um, and moisturizing properties. Serums are concentrated liquids used to penetrate deeper into the skin. Silicone leaves a protective film on the skin. Sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, is a salt uh, used for cleansing the skin or neutralizing. Sorbitol is a humectant that absorbs moisture from air. Sphingolipids are ceramides that are a natural part of the intercellular cement. Squalene, derived from olives, is a great uh, nourishing emollient. Sulfur reduces oil gland activity and dissolves the skin's surface uh, layer of dry dead cells. Tea tree is soothing and antiseptic. It also has antifungal properties. Titanium dioxide is a non-chemical ingredient. We know we use this in UV sunblock. Urea enhances the penetration abilities of other ingredients, so it's added to different skin creams, body creams. Witch hazel, really good for soothing the skin, instantly diffuses redness. Um, witch hazel is always nice to have on hand after waxing. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, for the face, especially the lip or the eyebrows. Zinc oxide protects and soothes. We know that zinc oxide is a main ingredient found in sunscreen. Uh, 
Choosing the correct product formulations is important to effectively treat the skin. So these are all ingredients that are just commonly found in skincare. You need to familiarize yourself with all of these um, and you need to be able to educate your client on different ingredients found in the products that you recommend for them. Okay, um, your product and ingredients quiz is going to be based on different ingredients and their definitions. So you have, um, you'll have a word bank at the top and then you'll have all the definitions and then you just have to match them, okay? So we'll go through Let's just go through um, some more of our acids that we use in skincare. Then I want to talk a little bit about international laws regarding um, what chemicals are allowed in skincare um, in Canada and the UK. And then we'll just kind of do some review for the quiz and then we'll have some question answers afterwards. Okay? So. You need to know these definitions for your quiz. You need to know the definition of antioxidants, binders, cleansers, colorants, emollients, fragrances, healing agents, humectants, lubricants, preservatives, solvents, surfactants, vehicles, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, sodium bicarbonate, jojoba, parabens, and retinoic acid. Okay? Okay, and I don't want you guys to forget about the acids. Acids are so widely used in skincare right now. Um, we've gone over this before. Citric acid comes from citrus fruits. Malic acid comes from apples. Tartaric acid comes from sour grapes. Um, we have mandelic acid that comes from bitter almonds. Uh, lactic acid comes from milk. Uh, we have uh, glycolic acid that comes from raw sugar cane. And then the BHA, um, beta hydroxy acid, is salicylic acid, uh, usually comes from willow bark. Okay, so those fruit acids are really important to remember. And then we have our two enzymes, uh, pineapple and papaya. Okay, I wanna talk about something fun now. Um, I wanna talk about some cool facts about cinnamon and honey. Cinnamon and honey are amazing together. So I'm gonna give you guys maybe some ideas of what you can do at home for um, certain remedies, okay? Honey is the only food on the planet that will not spoil or rot without a preservative. It will not do um, what some call it doesn't turn into sugar over time. It, it always stays honey. Um, honey is not sugar. Um, it will crystallize over time. If it crystallizes over time, that doesn't mean it's gone bad. Just reheat it up and use it um, how you would normally. Uh, never boil or microwave honey. You shouldn't microwave anything. It destroys the molecular structure of um, the molecule. Um, and it will kill the enzymes in the honey. So cinnamon and honey um, are used in most countries. It's used in medicine and it's used to treat diseases. So heart disease. Make a paste of honey and cinnamon powder, apply on bread um, and eat it for breakfast. If you have a little bit of cinnamon and honey every day, um, you can actually prevent heart disease. 
Um, I know a lot of people put cinnamon in their smoothies, they put honey in their smoothies. Um, there's a reason for that. It's amazing for you. It's a very powerful antioxidant. Uh, it helps with arthritis. It helps with bladder infections. So if you just put some cinnamon and some honey in a glass of warm water and you drink it every day, um, it can prevent that. Now, I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on this. These are just fun facts that I found on the internet. Oh. Honey and cinnamon powder can help with cholesterol. If you're suffering from a cold, you can take this every day as well. Upset stomachs, if you suffer from gas. Um, this is used a lot in India and Japan uh, for um, intestinal, intestinal disorders. It strengthens the immune system. It helps with indigestion. Um, if you sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on your food or you have cinnamon and honey before you have a big meal, um, it'll help with indigestion. Cinnamon and honey kills germs, so it's really good for warding off the flu or warding off the col uh, common cold. You can use it as a paste on the face as well. If you have pimples or papules, you can mix your honey and cinnamon into a thick paste and you can spot treat pustules and papules. Uh, that will remove pustules and papules after a week or two. Eczema, ringworm, any skin infections, again, make a paste, put it on the skin. Now it says here weight loss. I haven't tried this yet, but again, I know cinnamon's really good for stimulating uh, the metabolism. If you have cinnamon and honey um, in a drink, half an hour before you eat breakfast, so first thing in the morning, uh, and then right after, or right before you go to bed, before you brush your teeth, um, this apparently helps reduce weight. Um, more so in, in obese people, if you're already fit, it's not gonna make you skinny. Um, but if you have excess fat to shed, it will help with that. Cancer. Uh, research in Japan and Australia have revealed that advanced cancer of the stomach and bones have been cured successfully um, from people taking a daily tablespoon of honey uh, with one teaspoon of cinnamon powder for one month, three times a day. That's a lot of cinnamon. Um, helps with bad breath, fatigue. Um, and it says it also can help uh, restore hearing. It sounds like the wonder drug, basically. But fun facts, you guys can do some research and figure things out for yourself. So you guys do have components of product formulations. Um, you will have this quiz and you will um, need to start working on that and have it uh, completed by next week, okay? And again, it's just fill in the blank. Yes, please. So you can see here, you're gonna have all of the definitions on the right and then you're gonna have um, all the terms and you just match them, so pretty straightforward. Just make sure you guys can see the, um, the bottom there, the bottom turns, the zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, sodium bicarbonate, sodium, uh, jojoba, parabens, and re uh, retinoic acid. Just make sure that you have uh, those highlighted in your manual as well, okay? Perfect. Um, I just wanted to talk about parabens, uh, so PABAS, paraminobenzoic acid, was introduced into sunscreens in the 1970s because of its natural ability to absorb UV rays, the ones that cause sunburns. Most sunscreens today, however, do not use PABA. So you're going to see a lot of products now, um, this has been happening over the last decade, um, that say PABA-free, PABA-free. Um, you want to make sure that your products are PABA free. It was found to increase sensitivity to allergic reactions, 
because so many consumers were experiencing allergic reactions to it. This gained a reputation as being a skin sensitizer. It also tended to stain clothing. Uh, more concerning, however, were studies that showed PABA, paraminobenzoic acid, may damage the DNA in your cells. In the, la in the late 1990s, the University of Oxford um, did studies and showed when DNA, uh, DNA was added a chemical to a chemical sunscreen and exposed to sunlight, the sunscreen broke down, releasing free radicals that could damage the DNA. So this raised concern about uh, the PABA. Um, could it actually encourage the formation of cancerous cells in the skin? So that's kind of another fun topic for you guys to Google. Um, Google the concerns about PABA, P-A-B-A, and the concerns and effects uh, that could happen uh, if it's used in your sunscreen uh, when you're out in direct sunlight, okay? Now I want you guys to think about this as well when you're buying skincare products. Um, in the UK, United Kingdom, this um, probably is, this could have changed over the past year, um, but approximately 6,000 chemicals have been banned for use in cosmetic products. So body products, skin products, 6,000 basically in Europe. Um, guess how many products or ingredients have been banned in Canada? Do you guys want to take a guess? If 6,000 chemicals have been banned in the UK for use in cosmetic preparations, how many do you think have been banned in Canada? More or less? Amir says more. Do we have any other guesses? Yukiko, Gabby, Saho, take a guess. Less. Canada has only banned about 500 ingredients. So you could say that um, our products are more toxic. Um, they contain more toxins. We allow the import of more products from different countries that have high toxin levels. More, more, more. The UK bans more, but Canada, unfortunately, um, does not at this time. But anyway, things change all the time. Um, rules change all the time. There is a hot list you guys can go on. So if you go on to the um, cosmetic prohibited ingredient hot list, again, cosmetic prohibited ingredient hot list. You can go online, all the information is on there. You can see exactly how many ingredients are banned in different countries, what Canada is doing to stop that, what, the, what happens in the UK, um, what happens in other countries. Um, and it's really important. And there is a hot list of ingredients that you should not use topically on your face. And the number one product that has the most chemicals in it is lipstick. And where do we put lipstick? On our mouth. So we're constantly eating all of these chemicals. So you have to be extra careful about that as well. Lip gloss, lipstick, um, you don't want to be eating those chemicals all day, every day. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to get into some retailing, okay? Have some tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, let me see. Hold on. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you guys don't really have this uh, as a chapter in your manual, so we're just going to kind of make this more interactive. I want you guys to um, answer questions, so I'll be watching the screen. Um, everyone that's up there should be answering questions. This is really important. This is important for your client because they need to go home with professional products. And this is important for you because you need to make more money. And this is important for your boss or your employer because they need to make more money. 
Um, so I'm going to go over how to retail and how to figure out what the features and benefits are of certain products. Now I've gone over this with some of you that have taken different modules. We go over um, retailing in pretty much every module. Um, so some of you will find this um, to be more of a review. Okay? So when you're dealing with professional products, I'm actually going to bring my professional products that I have over there over so you guys can see them better. So when we're selling retail, we have to know features and benefits. So what would a feature and benefit be of this cleansing milk? Now normally, when you're first starting to learn your products, when you work for a new spa, um, hopefully they have training, and most spas do have training. Um, but if they don't, you need to um, self-teach, self you need to make cue cards, you need to always have them in your pocket. Um, but just read the bottle as well. The bottle tells you a lot. So if I'm not too sure about what this cleansing milk does, it says right here, it's a milk. It says it's for normal skin. And it says right here, ingredients, aloe vera extract. So I can say that a feature could be an ingredient. So this product has aloe vera in it. Aloe vera, we know, is very calming and soothing. Um, and it's great for a normal skin. So it's not too rich, and it's not going to dry the skin out. And you, if you have a little bit of redness, it's going to diffuse the redness. Okay, so right there, just from information on the bottle, I could sell this product. And usually on the back of a professional product, it has a list of ingredients as well. Uh, most of the time you can't understand what those ingredients mean because they're chemical ingredients with crazy names. Um, but the odd time you will um, recognize different ingredients. Okay, and you can see that the aloe vera uh, is on, on the back here too. So another way to sell products is from what the product looks like. So this product has a clear bottle. How is that clear bottle going to benefit my client? Well, if a feature of this product is that it has a clear bottle, what's a benefit of the clear bottle? I don't want you to say it has a clear bottle and it's really soothing. They don't match. The feature and benefit have to match. So it has a clear bottle allowing you to know when you're just about to run out, you can order more product. Okay? So a feature can be the shape of the bottle, the color of the bottle, um, and ingredients. A benefit is how the client will benefit in a positive way from that feature. So if a feature is that this um, cleanser has a pump, then the benefit of that feature is that it dispenses the perfect amount every time. So I'm never going to waste product. That's the benefit, okay? Does that make sense? Who is going to tell me a feature and benefit of this perfect brightening cleansing foam? This perfect brightening cleansing foam um, is a foam cleanser. It has a pump. Um, it has a solid um, bottle, it's not, you can't see through it, and it's for lightening, it lightens the skin. So remember, what are some lightening ingredients found in skincare that actually lighten hyperpigmentation? Who's going to guess? Mina.
Who remembers what the main lightening ingredients in skincare are? Let's start with that. We kind of went over some of them today. Ingredients used in skincare to lighten pigmentation, dark pigment. You guys are no fun. Nobody? Okay, I'll help you out. We can't spend too much time doing this. So, lightening ingredients. We know licorice root, bearberry, mulberry. What's the fourth one? Licorice root, mulberry, bearberry, and kojic acid. Okay, so say, that I'm saying um, that this product has kojic acid in it, so it's really good with lightening all your dark pigmentation. Done. One feature, one benefit. If you can name one feature and one benefit per product when you're selling, you'll sell the product. Um, it was really hard for me to actually sell products and push products because um, I was shyer, I felt uncomfortable. Yes, licorice root, exactly. Um, but once you get comfortable and you get comfortable with your verbiage and you get confident with the ingredients and it, you actually do your studying and you have little cue cards on you, um, after a couple of months, it'll all be uh, memorized and it'll all just roll off your tongue. Um, I learned this in training when I started at Beverly Spa on 4th as an esthetician years ago and they were the one spa that gave me the best retail training and I learned all of this from them. So, um, and it worked. It really did work. So let's see. This is long lasting eye contour cream. So this comes in a little pump. So again, you could say it comes in a little pump. So it dispenses the perfect amount every time. And you also want to let your clients know with eye creams, not to use too much. We know it's a grain of rice size per eye and we only apply the cream to the orbital bone. The orbital bone is right around the eye. If you go closer, this is going to absorb right up into the lash line and into the eye and irritate the eye. The number one product that clients return, uh, return is eye cream because they use too much and then their eyes burn and they don't like that. Um, and a lot of people are heavy handed, they use too much but around the delicate eye area, the skin is so thin, it only absorbs so much. So if there's too much, it's gonna seep into other areas um, of the eye, okay? So mental note that. Biological peeling gel. <clears throat> Biological peeling gel. So right away I look at the bottle, or I look at the box, and it says all skin types, so it's safe for everybody. Um, peeling, biological peeling, I know because I've had training on this line that that means enzymes and acids. Um, right here it says that there's HA acids, so alpha hydroxy acids, and green tea. So I can use that to sell the product. So this is great for all skins. Um, it's going to be gentle enough for you to use um, once or twice a week. Uh, I know your skin's a little more sensitive, so this will be perfect for you. Um, it has alpha hydroxy acids, which are going to go a little deeper to remove um, dead cells. And the green tea is a great uh, antioxidant to help rebuild um, and stimulate your cellular structure. Okay, done. You don't want to say this cream is amazing, I use it, it smells so good and it's just so moisturizing. No one cares that it smells so good and that it's moisturizing. Everyone says it's moisturizing, it's good for wrinkles, it's, so, it's just so nice. No, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear the facts. As a consumer, we're, we're very educated now, you guys are educated now when you go, you buy products. You want to know it works, you want to know what you're spending your money on. So just know that your clients are very educated 
and they want the facts. Okay? Good. Okay, guys, um, that's it. Your feature and benefit retailing quiz is going to have written statements, so it's going to have a benefit of a product or it's going to have a feature of a product. So all you have to do is fill in whether it's an F or a B, F or a B. Yes, some, um, some might be um, or could be both. Um, don't put F and B, one or the other, it's fine. Um, it de depends on the feature, um, sometimes the benefit can be different. So, for instance, I'll have minimizes dark patches on the skin. So if it minimizes dark patches on the skin, that's the action. That's the action that is happening in a positive way for your client. So that's the benefit. Removes dead skin cells. This could be a feature or a benefit, but let's say it's a feature. So if it's a feature, removes dead skin cells, what's the benefit? of removing dead skin cells. Softens the skin, refines the skin's texture, um, removes the dead crust, allowing for better extractions, um, allows the skin to breathe, oxygenates the skin, uh, revitalizes the skin. So it depends on what context you're using it in. What about, you guys tell me this, is this next one going to be a feature or a benefit? Contains AHA complex and green tea. Contains AHA complex and green tea. Feature or benefit? Feature, you are correct, yes. Feature, yes, good. Contains um, alpha high, um, AHA complex and green tea. So can you, yeah, feature, good. Mm -hmm. Who can tell me what a matching benefit to that would be? What is a benefit of a product containing AHA complex and green tea? product were we saying had that? This product has AHA and green tea. What do AHAs do? What do alpha hydroxy acids do? They remove dead skin, allowing uh, for a plumper, more hydrated skin. Um, the green tea will calm redness, yes. Green tea is soothing, so it will um, reduce redness. Yeah, good, good. Okay, let's try another one. This product has a glass translucent bottle. Is that a feature or a benefit? AHAs help to remove dead skin, yep. Mm -hmm. Anti-inflammatory, yep. Good, yep, no, those are all great. You guys have the right idea. So now, this product comes in a glass translucent bottle. Feature, correct. This product erases puffy eyes and dark circles. Feature or benefit.
Whoa, I have benefit up there already. That was fast. Correct, benefit. So he raised his puffy eyes and dark circles is a benefit. What about allows for better product penetration? This product allows for better product penetration. Yeah, that one could be a feature or a benefit, but mostly benefit. Yeah. What about contains bearberry and licorice? Contains bearberry and licorice. Are all those bees for bearberry and licorice? Or for the other one? Or the other one. The other one, okay. <laughs> yes. Bearberry and licorice is a feature because it's an, an ingredient. Mm -hmm. Feature. What about has a pump to dispense product? Comes with a pump to dispense product. Comes with a pump is a feature. Yes. And does somebody want to type out for me on the screen what a benefit to that feature is? So this pump, this product comes with a pump. What's a benefit of this pump? How am I going to benefit from having a pump on my product? The pump is a feature, so what's the benefit? Who wants to type it out? Exactly, Alex. A perfect amount comes out every time. Um, another great thing about a pump is that you don't have to open the product, um, scoop it out, um, and allow air into the product. We know that air oxidizes, um, so it lessens the efficiency or, or the effect of the ingredients every time. So with a pump, um, you don't have to open the product um, and it keeps everything sanitary uh, inside. Avoid wasting product, exactly, uh, Mina, that's a good one. Um, you can tell your product you only need to use two pumps of this morning and night. Don't use any more, don't waste it. This will last six to eight months if you use it correctly. So. Yeah, good. Those are good. Awesome. So I think you guys have it. Um, all you need to know is that a feature is a specific fact. A benefit is a key action of how the product will help uh, your client reach their goals. Okay? And all you have to do is write an F or a B, feature or benefit, for your retailing quiz. Okay? Good. Okay, that's it guys, ladies. Um, we'll open it up for questions now. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I will try to answer them as best as I can, okay?
know some of you have questions. Any questions for me? Yes, I can, Mina. Um, sodium bicarbonate is just baking soda, okay? So uh, baking soda is an alkaline product. So it's used commonly in the process that we know to be anaphoresis. Anaphoresis is deep cleansing of the skin. Um, anaphoresis is also known as disenc desincrustation. Um, so deep cleansing and um, you need to use an alkaline product um, because you're using the negative um, pole on the face. So basically it's just baking soda. It's found in a lot of skincare products. As well, um, I emailed you about previous work I had done. Are you answering questions over email as well? Yes, I am. If you're sending me your questions or quizzes um, via email, um, I can answer certain questions, specific questions that you have pertaining to questions or quizzes, I can answer for you guys. Um, I wanna try to keep all of the questions and answers for quizzes and questions and assignments um, in the Zoom conversation. Um, the Zoom is gonna be same time tomorrow, 12 o'clock um, every week. So make sure that you guys join tomorrow, okay? Um, we kind of did it for the first time last week, so we were kind of ironing out some kinks. Um, there was lots of people from other classes as well that were all um, joined at the same time. So let's um, save that for tomorrow, 12 o'clock, okay? Um, if there's any other questions that we missed or if things pop up that you need answers to, then of course I can answer them via email. Um, ingredients notes, sounds like much, I'll make sure, I'll double check and see what Anna has already sent you for that, um, but I'll make sure I send you um, the specific information um, for the ingredients quiz. You definitely don't need to know everything. Um, your manual does have everything because I, I read directly from the manual, um, but you only need to know a few specific um, ingredients, so I'll make sure that you have that in there. Alex, you're working tomorrow? Um, okay, yeah, just if there's, if you have any specific questions related to um, the information in your manual, then you can email me. Um, that's fine. Any other questions? Again, you guys have been doing great with uh, finishing your questions, handing them in, doing your quizzes. That's great. Work I did while I was at school, but you guys are boy, doing it again. I like all the anatomy work and other stuff that I have already done previously. Okay, yeah, if you've already done all that, Alex, then that's fine. Um, Anna has a plan for you already, um, so I can go over that with her and we can discuss that at a later time. Um, if you're confused about the content, um, and information that is required of you, then definitely email Anna about that, okay? And she'll, she'll know exactly um, what's going on for you. Yeah, we'll make sure that um, we go over everything that uh, needs to be done.
Yeah, and remember guys, Anna's email is anna at newimage.ca. Uh, super simple. She can answer most of your questions. You're welcome, Gabby. No problem. Okay, guys. I think that's it. Um, we'll see you at Zoom tomorrow at 12 o'clock. And um, again, if you have any questions, then those should go directly to Anna, Anna at newimage.ca. And uh, I, I had a lot of fun today. Great seeing you all. I can't see you, but I'm Im imagining I can. And um, we'll have our next lesson next week. Bye.